Hi guys, Level Up here. Today I got my hands on the new six piece classified Nomad gear set and also had a play around with the new Big Alejandro exotic LMG. So I decided I'd pair them up and have a go at taking on Times Square Power Relay on Legendary mode and just to see if this set was going to be basically the solo PvE player's dream. Um, if you're not familiar with the new classified gear bonuses for Nomad, let me just show you those. So we now have a 5 piece bonus as an extra 10% health on kill and uh, improved Nomad's resolve. So this just increases the effectiveness of that 3 piece bonus. So you get extra healing and it will allow you to overheal as well. Now they haven't given us any numbers for this so we don't really know how much you get in terms of a heal but it appears to be a percentage based increase so I tested out with low stamina and high stamina and the amount of, sort of health per tick was the same in terms of uh, the segment, the amount that it increased basically in your health segment. So that indicates a percent based increase which also suggests that the higher stamina you have and the, the bigger your health pool, obviously the more effective health you're regenerating through this five piece bonus. And then we have the six piece, which is Nomad's Luck. And that is the same as the four piece, only it just enhances it slightly. So where you take fatal damage and you heal straight back to full health, you now have a 50% chance for that to have no cooldown. So in the four piece, you I think it's a four minute cooldown. Let me just check. Yeah, so it occurs once every four minutes. But with a six piece, you can get 50-50 chance for that to be instant rather than four minutes. And the other thing is, when you take that fatal damage and you heal back to full health, you now have a 10 second period where you take 75% less damage. So that is really good. So it's basically like popping recovery link and survivor link at the same time. So obviously you're going to be in a, a, a tricky situation where you've just died. So that's going to be able to give you that sort of 10 seconds where you take almost hardly any damage and give you that opportunity to, to sort of run away to, to safety. So that's a really strong six piece. And if you're playing solo, uh, and running recovery link as well then obviously it, it's like it's hard to imagine situations where you're gonna die frankly because you've got so much opportunity to be revived back to full health so I thought it'd be a really strong set and I really wanted to give it a try so that's what we did today uh, let me just show you the build now then so it's based around six and a half thousand stamina 5,300 firearms and 4,000 electronics. So it's low electronics partly because we're not going to be trying to heal ourselves at all with um, first aid because we've got so much healing through Nomad and we've got such a big health pool that even with overdose at like 5,000 electronics we're not really healing much at all so it's not really worth it better off running lower electronics and just having some other different skills more around crowd control so that's where we are with the stat distribution uh, let me show you the weapons I'm gonna run so I wanted to try this out with the warlord if you're not familiar with the warlord it has a unique talent where when you're firing your weapon you get a 20% damage reduction and then when you stop firing the damage is applied over time, over a few seconds. So the idea is that we could potentially do a bit of face tanking. So while we're shooting the enemy, we're getting that 20% damage resistance. And then when we kill them, we get the chunk of health back through, uh, through the Nomad bonuses. And then that kind of offsets the amount of damage that we may take uh, afterwards when we stop firing. So it's quite a good sort of pairing with this Nomad set. So that's that's one weapon I wanted to use with this set. And I also wanted to try that new big Alejandro exotic out. So if you're not familiar with this one, um, 
it has a unique talent called Cover Shooter, where every bullet fired when in cover increases your weapon damage by 0.5% up to 50%. The bonus will last for 10 seconds, but if you get a kill, it extends that duration, so it keeps refreshing that 10 seconds. Um, it will be cancelled if you reload your weapon, or if you swap your weapon, or when you exit combat. So, what I thought would be good here is to try and run Meticulous, so that if we do manage to get a few kills, we've always got that chance of refilling the magazine and therefore avoiding having to reload, which is going to cancel the bonus. So this is a good way to try and keep that 50% bonus up for as long as possible. It is worth mentioning at this point that it is probably uh, a bit overtuned this weapon at the moment. If we just look at the numbers here, We've got a base damage of 16k, we've got a thousand RPM, and we've got a mag size of 55. And if we compare that to the Pecan, for example, which up to now was the most powerful LMG, you can see that the base damage is only very slightly more on the Pecan. Um, these are both fully optimized, by the way, I've, I've optimized both at the, the new optimization station. So we can see the, the base damage is 16,500, but only 650 RPM and also a smaller mag size as well so it just doesn't make sense that it would be a thousand RPM and 16 base damage I think they will probably end up uh, tuning that down slightly kind of similar to what happened when the MG5 first came out I think it came out with a huge amount of base damage and 800 RPM and everyone was just melting everyone immediately so yeah, I think that's going to happen in probably the second week of the BTS or something. But for now, obviously, I wanted to give it a try anyway and, uh, and see how it was. And it was a lot of fun. So, those are the weapons. Um, I'm running, like, a fairly balanced build. I mean, I didn't roll health on the vest. I just wanted to try out EDR instead and have a reasonable amount of uh, damage resilience. So I've got... EDR rolled on the vest and on the mask. On the knees we've got stamina as the main stat, we've rolled health and we've got damage to elites, bleed resistance on the miners. And on the backpack it's rolled for stamina, health and ammo capacity. Because we do both of these weapons kind of want you to be firing a hell of a lot of bullets um, so it's really important to have although it's nice sometimes to have bleed or burn resistance we really did need ammo capacity on this one the gloves have got extra health on kill so it takes my total up to 30 and um, we've got assault rifle damage and enemy armor damage as well the skills I'm running are seeker mine cluster and smart cover strangely enough I did want to give Smart Cover a go, and I think I thought it'd be a nice, uh, uh, nice pairing, obviously with the the LMG with the the Cover Shooter talent. So we're going to be in cover a fair bit, and this is going to give us a nice boost to our stability and accuracy, as well as giving us a bit of extra damage resistance while we're in cover. And for that reason, I was running with Smart Cover Duration mods and one Smart Cover Damage Resilience mod, I think. So, quick look at the character sheet. You can see we're not running any crit, really. That's probably just what's, um, what's on the weapon mods is the miners. And we have... 30% health on kill. We've got damage to elites on the miners for the mask and the knee pads. That's what's given us our 28% damage to elites. Got 53% enemy armor damage. That's just on the primary on the warlord, and that's the 24% that's in the uh, the passive bonus on the assault rifle, and it's also got destructive on it as well. And the rest is just um, some ma uh, major stat rolls on the gear. So that's it. You can see our maximum health is 358,000, which is a significant amount. And that's what's given us such a large amount of toughness. So we're now running at 525,000 toughness for this build. And you can see here 21% EDR, 
and 33% bleed resistance. So that's really useful in Legendary because you're getting bleed put on you a fair bit and you're also getting spam with grenades. So combination of these two also really helps with that survivability. So that's really it. Um, I will now show you the footage and uh, you can judge for yourself what you think and uh, decide whether you think this is going to be like the best build ever. It's certainly really strong for PvE uh, and I like it and I hope they don't change it but I have a feeling it may be a bit strong in PvP. I did play a bit of uh, the new skirmish mode today and I did come across some people running Six Piece Nomad and you know they were just indestructible for a, a period of time. It depends how lucky that you are with that 50% chance of proccing the Six Piece because obviously it just means if you kill them they come straight back if you kill them again they may not die again so sometimes they're just completely invulnerable which is perhaps not the best thing um, so we'll just have to see what they what they think I mean most of the tuning that goes on is based around PvP so you know we'll have to see what happens but that's it let's um, let's jump into the gameplay now so as you can see I have a full overheal and that is a result of the five piece bonus you can see it dropping and healing back up. I think there might be a slight bug, but it doesn't really make a lot of difference. But that's going to keep me over heals and provide me with obviously a lot of sustain. The green nomad icon at the bottom is there to indicate that my four piece bonus is ready. So if I do take fatal damage, I will get um, it will proc and I will be taken straight back to full health. Although, because I have Recovery Link available as well, Recovery Link will pop first. That's kind of how it prioritises it in the game. You can see I've got the Alejandro equipped, and if I start firing, you can see that bonus start to build up there. So at 40%, and as soon as I reload uh, or swap weapons, it goes away. And here's the, the Warlord bonus at the bottom procking as well. So that's there to say that I was then taking damage after I stopped firing that damage over time so again that bonus builds up really quickly and it will reset the timer there so we're now up to 44 up to 50 percent if I can kill another enemy uh, not able to unfortunately but uh, running the meticulous does give you that opportunity to potentially get a free refill so here when the shotgunners came up I was on 49% bonus and there we killed the guy and we got a full mag reload exactly when we needed it so now we're at that 50% buff melting our way through these shotgunners didn't get two procs unfortunately, but uh, switched to the, the Warlord to finish him off. So that was pretty good. One thing I think they have done, I think they have um, slightly enhanced the aggression on the legendary NPCs. They do rush and flank you a lot more than they did before I think a lot of, I've seen a lot of people mention it in reddit um, it's hard to know without them confirming it but it does feel like they are stronger and they are more aggressive for sure so when you're outnumbered they do uh, seem to want to yeah come and rush you try and finish you off which makes sense and uh, I don't mind that as a change I think it's it makes things a lot more frantic and yeah more interesting so I think that's a good change if they have actually changed it you can see they're all rushing up the stairs which is uh, I'm not quite sure they would have done that before you can see the buff doesn't proc uh, when we're out of cover so obviously that's intended annoying double reload don't know how that guy actually got out there. He must have run out beside me without without me noticing. That's why I'm running Cluster C because it's really good for getting them out of cover when you need to. When 
when they hide, they're very hard to shoot. So it's uh, it's it's a good thing to run. It's a bit of crowd control, and it's also a bit of you know, get them out of cover. You notice there the the change to the movement speed, uh, direction change speed is a real pain. You can see it was just a lock of turning like a, a battleship. I'm not sure I like that change. I don't really think it's it's adding a lot to the game. I don't think it's doing anything for PvP either. I think it's just as bad as it was. Uh, all it does is uh, make you get stuck behind doors, which happened to me in uh, a legendary mission in the, in the live game recently, which is really annoying. But um, there we go. You can see the, the talents proccing at the bottom. I just wanted to cover what those symbols mean. I'm not going to drone on for the whole video. I'll leave you to watch the footage and uh, see what you think. So I hope you enjoy it. Please let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or anything. Drop me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all in the next video.
Additional hostiles detected.
beyond this point is extremely unsafe. Do not travel alone or unarmed.
Hostiles detected. Styles detected. Thank you. 